So about eight years ago, I had this roof redone by roofers and it's been watertight since then. It's been excellent and it's always pained me to think that if I want to put solar panels on it, A, it's three stories up and B, I have to wreck the slates. Because they were doing the roof next door and they've had solar panels where they just drove a six inch screw straight through the roof and put in loads of sticky black stuff to uh, make it watertight. I thought that was a nasty job, didn't want that on my roof. But these brackets, you'll see them in a minute, they're just an L hook. You have to flash above and below them and they look really neat. There's really, the dust is just from cutting the slates with a grinder. But I ripped the slate above out with the ripper or the slater's rip and uh, then worked down a block, cut out the slate below, took up a bit of lead, um, put the bracket in, put a washer of roofing batten in so that the bracket doesn't kick and work from there. You'll see what I'm doing. I've never worked with slate before, but I'm finding it relatively easy going. I spent yesterday doing my prep, getting tools together and that, had a few hours to spare. And then today I just started early and it took me an hour and a half to get that one in. And then about 30 minutes, 20 minutes each. It'll take me longer because I'm making a video, but I'll crack on. Okay, so I'll do a bit of voiceover because I was concentrating on the work. Here's the rip. and You slide it up under slate, a couple of slates above one where you need to make the hole in. I'm feeling for a nail and then I'll pull it down hard and this was an easy one relative to some of the other ones that I did but you can't get at it just use a hammer and beat up and down if you google it or search for it on YouTube how to rip a slate but that, that is how you do it and it worked out I've never done that before I've started this morning but it worked out okay the cushion under my bum made it a lot easier I have to say a lot easier now this is the beginning of a bit of abortive work. I took this nail out because I didn't, wasn't quite thinking about what I was doing, and it ultimately it just has to go back in later on. It's the one, the one that I wanted to get out was this one beside it. So I've put, I can't get a grip on it, so I've put the rip in underneath to pop the nail up a little bit, the nail head. And you can see how hard it is to push that in for this one because that nail is down fast. The other ones. They don't, they don't always hammer them in tight. Like I said previously, I got this roof done about eight years ago and because it hadn't been touched since then, everything was quite uniform and the roofers who did it did a nice job of it. So I'm still forcing the way in there. So this system that I'm using here is a Fasten Saw slate system and I'm flashing it with lead. Fasten Saw is the brand of track and I haven't seen any videos of how to do this using lead. I've seen where they use a tile bracket, like a terracotta or a concrete tile bracket in slates, and they use this plastic hood flashing. I'm sure that works just as well. I would still put lead under it if I was going to do it, but I didn't in this case uh, use that plastic system. It came, it even came with the brackets they sent, sent them to me, but I think at this point in the video I was contemplating rotating the slates out of the way which is something you can do you leave one nail in rotate these these two slates I'm working on out of the way but then I changed my mind and I just go to ripping this one out momentarily this one here I was trying to rotate it and then I just changed my mind and stuck the rip in pushed it up to free the nail up a bit you're trying to get around the nail get a twist there I've started to rotate it I, I changed my mind and I rip it out now in a second because I realise I have to cut below it with the angle grinder anyway, so it just might as well come out. Bang. Now, the nails that the roofers use are aluminium nails, so the rip mixed through them quite quickly and easily. I'd say if you had galvanised nails up there, it might be a bit tougher. You can see on the shirt there, I'm three stories up and it's about 30 degrees. It was near midsummer 2025 up on this roof and mighty hot. So that's me reaching in there to feel the rafter or the spar coming down, marking it out and just trying to suss out where I need to cut. So the bracket here, this is what these look like at long last. They're just an L hook, but they're made out of stainless. They've got three holes in them. You really only need to fasten two of the holes according to the manual. Um, but I guess it depends on what your roof looks like if you've got a 10 inch slate which I have or a 12 inch slate maybe it makes a difference now I've got to say battery grinders are the business in the past I would have been doing this with a cable and all that stuff or 
trying to nibble it out or remove that slate and cut it elsewhere and all this no with this battery grinder and this is only a little one um no aldi uh great little thing lashes through them makes a good bit of dust and you can see i've got earmuffs on i think but not dust protection and that's because there was a breeze blowing and what are you going to do about it so you cut in you've got to go through all the slates and you can see why that on the face of it makes a big hole in your roof but ultimately i'm going to flash it with lead under the tile i'm cutting under the slate i'm cutting and above it as well so we'll have two and a half inch overlap of lead and then another slate on that as you can see just down on the right hand side there there's very little of the bracket sticking up but you can just make out in the right bottom corner of the video there's a little bit of lead sticking out there so it's flashed above with that and it's flashed underneath it as well so the top bit's easy to get out the bottom one's trickier because you don't want to wreck the slates you could grind all over and make a mess but i tried to be tidy because it's my roof just pop it out they're quite brittle and then this bit here needs to be nibbled out so i use the pincers there's probably a better tool but when you're up on a roof three stories up you don't keep going up and down every time you need to get a tool so maybe i mentioned it already maybe i didn't i am not a roofer i would consider myself a diy person or a homeowner or that kind of thing if you disagree with anything i'm doing here in terms of the method or the the uh, construction method I'm using or how I'm doing it or if you've got any efficiencies to suggest put them in the comments below because it's helpful for me I might not be doing it again on my roof given that this is it done and here what I'm trying to do is uh, size out where I need to drill a hole because if I those are little blocks of uh, pressure treated uh, roofing battens I need to drill a hole otherwise I'll split it so a lot of the kits come with plywood but I'd rather use a wood that's treated because the battens in the roof are treated so I just cut them to what looks like about 10 centimeters four inches long and then a shorter one half as long kind of just as a pad underneath I don't know if they stay there if they fall down or what can't really tell so this is just to bridge between the rafter below and the bracket that I'm going to screw through it so put that in there then I've got to get a little one to go underneath. Have I decided where it is yet? That's the lead that's, that'll go beneath. I need, before I put that lead in, I need to put in a little spacer, so I don't know what I'm doing here. I just hammered that nail in. That's why I'm saying I'm not a roofer. A roofer who does this every day, while I'm taking probably 20 minutes at this, a proper roofer, if you want to call him that, or someone who does it every day, We'll just have a method. They'll just have a belt on with the hammer and everything else. They'll have a pocket of nails. They'll have their tools to hand. Now, look, he's done that, and he hasn't put the packer in, so he's got to pull that out again. What is he doing? Has he decided he's going to take it out again? Yeah. There it is. Pull it down again. What I was amazed at is that while the slates are really quite brittle, especially at the start of that slater's rip, you can kind of batter into them quite aggressively up to the point where they break and I was quite lucky yesterday I did it yesterday I might have said today earlier in the video um, I was quite lucky I managed not while walking on the roof crawling on the cat ladder or hammering grinding and cutting and everything else and doing this kind of dressing of this lead here I'm just dressing it down into a divot here I was lucky that I didn't break any of the slates and if I did I'd have to replace them using the method you'll see at the end of this video so I'm just nailing that off that's a bit of a belt and braces approach because we're going to screw through it anyway for the bracket um, I've put a bit of a divot in it just so that it sits down and I'm not tearing through it when I screw down the bracket you just dress it in with the hammer roughly I'm not even sure if you have to do that but I was nervous that I'd shear the lead and then the roof wouldn't be waterproof so you see that top hole I'll screw in first and then bottom hole I'm going to use as well and we're flashed up to that bottom hole using the lead and above it really but really once you put a hole in it that's where it is and then I'll put another piece of lead on top that'll flash right down to the bracket and then I'll put a slate on top as well so this is the impact driver here and it just lashes these bolts in again an Aldi product which no affiliation to but they're cheap and they really do work for intermittent jobs you know, I'm up on a roof one day with a grinder and I'm putting up a bit of 
bicycle or something the next day they do the trick for that i don't know if they'd be any good all day in the rain and everything else but here we are so two screws in on top bracket that's it fitted now then a bit of lead flashing up top so why am i doing that slip it in lift it up to slip in the lead under that slate and there'll be another slate going on the left and then another slate going above so we're pretty well waterproof but it's very near the joint in the two slates above so it makes sense to have that lead again i'm just dressing it in mostly so that it kind of stays in place left to right but it's hanging on a bracket and i'm going to put a nail up above a copper nail up above to hold it into the batten i think i find one there it is yeah so it was about 30 degrees and i was just dripping sweat and i found putting a hanky underneath my hat stopped my ears getting sunburnt and i'd rather wear a long sleeve shirt and gloves and heavy trousers in the sun than have sunburn so that's me checking the lead the lead's resting on that give it a rub feels flat so this slate's got to go back in where is it Starting from this side, but I think I changed my mind a bit of the way through and go from the other side. So I've got to get it above the bracket to slide it across. And I don't know, I might be faffing with this for a couple of seconds here. I don't think I will, but it's just this is the hard kind of it's, it's hard to put them back as it is to take them out because it, like I'm levering that slate above up. There's a point where you can lever it to, and then eventually it'll break. And if it breaks, well, you've got to fix the slate above it as well. And you know. Now, that's as far as it'll go, because it's hitting the batten above that it should be resting on. So I've got to pull it out again. Like this, and slide it in from the other side. Now I've got the hammer hanging in there. The, ha the claw of the hammer does a lot of work up on a roof. I got that hammer, it's an S-Wing hammer. I got it a long time ago, and it's lovely to use. I haven't even broke the varnish off it properly. But I've had that 15, 20 years now, so it's a good hammer. Right. That slate's back in, it's fully flashed, it's waterproof apart from the tile above. I'm happy that water can't get in there, lead above and below. It's also the steel stainless steel bracket is not resting on anything but the timber below. So those panels, if they're rattling in the wind or whatever, they're not actually touching any slates. Now I'll nail, whoa, that was a slip. Nail that back in with a copper nail. And this time here, I think, that nail goes in a little bit too easy, so I pull it out again, and it's lost. I'm going to nail it in again at a different angle, because there was a hole there from the previous nail, and it would basically be loose. What I did on some of these slates, where I've ripped out two of the nails, and only put one back, what I did was I drilled a hole about an inch off that, and put a second nail beside it. Probably a bit superfluous, and I probably didn't do it here, because that slate's also resting on the bracket, or, well, if it slips, it'll rest on the bracket. It's about two mil up from it at there. So getting this last one in, I had to go off at lunchtime to get these hooks. These are called haul hooks. They're a proprietary system for putting slates back on that have slipped. You just hammer that in between the two slates above. It pulls down on the batten above. You nail it off and then you slip the slate in. It sounds really easy. The other thing you could do is use a copper strip. So just nail a copper strip in where I'm nailing that, slide the slate in and then fold the copper up. You could make your own strips out of lead. I contemplated making them up out of a bit of like water pipe hammered flat, which would be copper. And I chose not to. I chose to spend £10 on this pack of 10 clips, mostly because I think they look better. No particular other reason. They're a stainless steel coil spring loaded hook. I just thought they looked better. I thought spending money on the panels. I got the panels for 65 plus VAT. That's five panels. You know, I'm buying a rail system, I thought I'd just spend that bit of money and have my roof on my house looking good. Now, here's the trickiest bit of this job, uh, fitting this last slate. That's the distance it won't go in is half the width of a, bat of a batten. That slate, at the top of that slate, where it's, you know, two rows up, is re it should be resting on a batten. And you've got to kind of hook it a little bit sideways or something to get it onto that batten. And that's tricky, and I'll, you'll see what I do here. I think I get the hammer out again. You want to kick the back of it up a bit there, like I say. It's a long day. This is getting on for half past six, and I started at about half seven in the morning. And I just kept going because I managed to get all 12 hooks in in a day. 
which I thought was going pretty good for someone who'd never done this before and had to go out for an hour, half an hour each way to get get these hooks. So I used the claw to make a gap with the handle of the pincers in to hold the slate up, lift that slate up beside it, give it a wiggle and a shimmy sideways and then it sits in and I get in the hook again, the little guide to pull that hook centre, clip it off and it's a bit loose there, but once I pull the hammer and the pincers out, it's pretty good to go, and I'm happy with that. And that's it. That's the whole process. In this video, it took about 15 minutes. And I think it took 13 minutes, because there was a preamble. But that's about an honest length of time for this. Finding the rafters is hard, and you'll have to figure out how to do that. I measured off the chimney in the loft, and took spacings, and then translated them onto the roof outside above, so I was able to get access to the loft. If you know the spacing, once you've got one, you'll find them all. You can find one by taking out a couple of slates. You can do it that way. So I'm just finishing up on the next one here with the, with the slate hook. If this video has been helpful, think about leaving a comment, subscribing to the channel, giving the video a like, or becoming a member of the channel. I'd appreciate it. It seems to make things run smoothly on YouTube. You can leave a donation through PayPal. Um, if you've got a link to another video where someone's doing this, using that kind of bracket with lead. Let me know about it because YouTube wouldn't find it for me a few days ago when I went trying to look at that and that's why I put the video up, hopefully, to help you. It's it's something that, um, you know, you could get a slater in on a day rate and a roofer and they would already know what to do. There was a guy fitting similar brackets but they were the, the hook type brackets where they're not just an L, they're an L with a bit on the bottom. But he was flashing it in lead like this, so that's kind of what I did, a hybrid between lead and the slate bracket. He was doing a, sl a whole hook, slate out to slate back in, and the hook fitted with lead flashing in about three or four minutes. Uh, he knew where the rafters were and he just went for it and he had all the tools to hand and he was up on a roof and he knew what he was doing. You know, I'm at it 15 minutes and... I've never done it before. So there's an in-between if you're semi-professional or whatever. That's the next slate going on. It went on easier. I think, in my mind, I think it's hanging a bit low there. So I'm just kind of patting it in. Ultimately, all this will be covered in solar panels. So you'll just never see it again. There I am, basking in a day's work. That pad underneath my knees, that's a... Uh, memory foam pad from, I think, a wheelchair or one of those walking aids. You find them thrown out all over the place and they're easy to wipe down and they don't get, you know, soaked through like the sponge behind me in the rain. So I just tidy up the site and I'm going to go home and have some dinner, well, downstairs and have some dinner. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, become a member. Give me some of your money if this video has been helpful and saved you a day rate on a roofer. I had a safe day, I was quite happy working on the cat ladder for the higher up ones, I didn't really have to rest on the roof, and I also put a cushion under the cat ladder, and that spreads the load out, so it's not just pinpointing it at the foot of the ladder. You know, I was quite pleased with it, I got all the hooks in, in line, the only thing I'd say is, um, get your first two hooks in, and then when you're fitting the last one, put the bar across it, put the solar panel bar across it, and that that'll give you the line to put the third hook in or do the two edge ones and then get the middle right because some of the courses of slates on my roof weren't exactly perfect yeah, a nice job, tidy up and uh, have a good evening thanks for watching, see you later